Welcome to our tutorial about the message box function. We've used it frequently through this course already. As you know, the message box function displays a message to the user, then it waits for the user's input, and then it returns an integer that indicates which button was clicked. In this tutorial, we're going to look more closely at the message box function. I've got a rule open for editing here. It's called message box function. Near the top of the screen, you'll see that we're on the model tab. Let me place my cursor where I'd like to insert the code and let's go to the wizards tab. Select message box. Here we can enter a title for the message box. Down below, we enter some prompt text. I'll type, do you want to continue? Now let's choose the buttons that we'd like to show in our message box. We choose from this drop down menu. OK, OK, cancel, abort, retry, ignore. I'm going to use yes, no, cancel. Now let's choose an icon. For my icon, I'm going to use a question mark. The default button option specifies which button has the focus. So for the button that has focus, you can press enter instead of using your mouse and that button will receive the input. In our case, it's going to be button one. Let's click OK. As you can see, this line of code is pretty long. Let's make it more user friendly. We do that with a space, underscore, enter. Let's do it again, space, underscore, enter. And one more time here, space, underscore, and enter. So the space, underscore, and enter is the syntax for breaking a line of code. You need the space before the underscore, otherwise it's not going to work. Let's take a look at our code here. Our first argument is the message. Do you want to continue? Our second argument is the title, my iLogic dialog. The third argument specifies which buttons will be displayed. And argument four, this specifies which icon will display. The last argument in this code specifies the default button, in our case, button one. Remember, that's the button that has the focus. You may recall me mentioning that this function returns an integer. Let me declare my variable result as an integer. And then let's test out how this works. Click OK. Here is our message box. Notice my first button has a different color than the other two. If I press enter, the yes button is the one that has the input. If you want to change the folk, you can use the tab key on your keyboard. Let's click yes. Six is my return value, and this indicates that I press the yes button. Let's click OK. And let's double click our rule again. Run it again. This time I'm going to press no. We've got a return value of seven. Let's click OK. Let's expand the message box branch of the tree in the browser on the left. iLogic gives us a number of different snippets that we can double click on to insert. Here are some different button combinations we can use. Here's some icons. And down below, we can specify the default button. Let's replace our buttons with abort, retry, and ignore. Let's delete the extra comma here and try our program by clicking OK. Do we want to continue? Let's click abort. The return value is three. Okay. Let's double click to open again. Now let's change the icon. Let's bring in the error icon. Just delete this extra comma here. And let's see how our message box looks now. This time let's click ignore. Our return value is five and click okay. This concludes our tutorial about the message box function.